Hello friends and welcome to another episode of the Urban Homesteading Channel. If this is the first time you're visiting with us, we want to extend to you a very warm welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. If today is your birthday, we want to wish you a very happy birthday. Today we're going to work on a fun and useful project that virtually anyone can do. Even though we're going to utilize a lot of old tools, this is really a project you can use by having just like a this, box. which is a, just a very inexpensive miter box. You can buy one of these with a saw for about $10 at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, not sponsored by either of those. And this is all you need, the saw and this miter box to work on today's project. In our case, we have the tools and we use them primarily to speed things up so we can finish the production of the video. So what we're working on today is making a little uh, stand for a laptop for work or your home office or whatever you want to do, right? Mm -hmm. We are going to choose, we, are, we did choose a little better quality wood than we normally buy. We didn't buy construction uh, quality lumber, but we did buy finished lumber, right? Yeah. And for this project, we, we did choose poplar with some really, really nice grain. And we're going to just uh, poly it at the end. We're not going to, to do any other finish, right? Right. So this is an easy afternoon project, I think. What do you think, Mrs. Wizard? Yeah, it was definitely a, a one afternoon project. And uh... and it's not very expensive. I mean, especially if you consider that a, a laptop uh, what stand, stand. You, you're going to spend $14, $15 for something plastic, right? Mm -hmm. Very poor quality. And this project, you can make it anything you want. You can most certainly use pine or any more inexpensive wood. And you can paint it or, or stain it and finish it to your liking, right? Yep. For our purposes, that's what we chose. And also, we're using our new Ortur laser. And we're going to, to give it a little more of a, a whimsical feel, right? Yeah, Again, design. You can laser anything you want to it. You can personalize it. That is the, the thing we wanted the laser for. And this is the first project we used the laser. And it came out really, really nice. Right? Mm -hmm. And for our standard practice, we're going to use the first piece to set the second piece, right? Yeah. And if we calculate it correctly, we should have a third piece. going to have to combine the three pieces to make a wider surface, right? Yep. All right, so we're going to do that. We decided to have the the width of our uh, stand, is what, what is that called? Yeah, the stand, right? it's a laptop stand. We, were, we want that to be about 11 and a half inches, primarily to make the best use of our wood, right? We didn't want to have a lot of uh, extra, a lot of weight. So this right. is the dimension will be able to accommodate most every laptop. Yep. All right. So we want as good a join between the two boards as possible. So we're going to use our joinery because in uh, checking it in our uh, dry fitting, we notice there is a gap, right? That we do, we do not like. See, so you need to do it. Have some, uh, maybe you need to put something in something. It's here. not quite. This, this border we need to do I that think it might be this yeah, one. So we're now getting ready for the glue up. We set them in a way that we like. 
Again, this is not the most critical thing because we are going to, because the laptop will cover this. So we kept the, the nicer wood actually for the front of the piece okay. versus the top, because most of the time this will be covered. But in either case, we want it to be nice and, and finished looking and everything, right? Mm -hmm. We also uh, we want it to be as flat as possible. So we put a piece of ply underneath with some uh, wax paper. So glue, any glue spill will not really get on the, on the wood. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting ready to start the glue up. So we're starting our glue up. We're going to put glue on one of the surfaces only. And here the glue is going to do most of the work, so be liberal with your glue application. All right? We need to line them up on that side, which is a more perfect side for some reason. Okay, put the other one. So for this small piece it looks like a lot of clamping but it's really appropriate for what we're trying to achieve, right? Right, because you want the seams to be almost invisible or as close to invisible yes. as you can make them. This a little more? No. Yeah, okay. that one is smooth. And in order to avoid the pieces to come up, we're going to put a 2x4 and some clamping power. So here we finally got it uh, clamped up. We had to get a longer board, have it there, it's on the table, just trying to keep it in place so that it will dry flat and as close to aligned as we can get it. So now we're going to cut our front and back pieces in the same dimension because our width is still 11 and a half. So about half an hour has passed since we start the, the gluing process and now we hope <coughs> it is done. This was very convoluted to a very large degree because I did not uh, really plan it very well. To other is because it's kind of small and to get another degree is because we don't have the right um, work area. That's a lot of degrees. Many degrees. So you can see the glue bleed out and here's what the plan is to take the scraper and scrape it off as opposed to wiping it because then it doesn't go into the of the wood. Of course, in this problems. case, it didn't make a difference. I, I just realized because we're not painting it or staining it. Right. But, but if you were to paint or stain, then doing it this way 
uh, prevents it from getting into the grain and causing a problem. And I would finish. like to pass this through the planer. The planer too. What do you think? Okay. Solid. This is why you need to do this, right? Right. I mean, this side looks really good. The other needs a little bit of planing, right? All right. Now, if you don't have a planer, you can use sanding on this for this, right? Right. But we're going to use our planer. Again, this is not a, a must-have. As we said, we have a planer, a thickness planer, and we're going to use it. But if you don't, Sanding will do the equal job, right? Yeah, this just does it a little finer and a little faster, right? Much faster, actually. So if you have it, it's nice to use. Most certainly. So since we have noisy machines, we decided to use them. Excellent. Right? Mm -hmm. And so what we were doing there was just shaping up the, the edges, either end. Yeah, just making sure, even though we had uh, good dimensions, always you're going to have small differences in the board, mm -hmm. you know. So this just kind of evened everything up to make it. Right. Okay. And again, those are not necessary things, but we, we're treating this as a, a furniture kind of thing, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. And you can see the joints there are really nice. So we're going to use our new oil tool and create a little bit of a decoration in this piece. I mean, that's a big part of why we bought it. I saw a little flame there. Did you? I did not, because I was looking on the screen. Well, you can't be able to see it on the screen, no? So, this is the design. This should take like about 10-12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll let that run and then come back and see how it's better. It's going pretty quickly actually. Yeah, this is actual time. We're not speeding the laser up. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have noticed is that this particular wood is really dry, so there's a little more smoke than we anticipated. The detail is amazing, right? Mm -hmm. And I bet you when uh, you put some poly on it, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. So this is our final result, and we are very pleased. We are learning how to use our laser, but this actually exceeded my expectations. What about you, ladies? Yeah, it looks really nice, and did yeah, a really they... good job of centering it on the board. And I didn't do that. You guys did that, but you know. Gonna be really nice looking for the the detail is awesome though, no? yeah. yeah so now we have to continue the woodworking part so we're getting our trusty red clamps to help us with uh, the alignment of this piece which have become a favorite yeah we really like this don't we you want to call this this is drying really fast with it open you just you want to dry fit. Hmm? That will have to go down. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, if you can hold that there. Yeah, but I thought you wanted this behind. Yeah, I do. Okay. So I'll hold it here so you know where to go. Actually, this is where you want. We know. That's what we're adjusting for. The clamp can't go down any further. Further? Mm -mm. The clamp cannot go down any further. There we go. What a nice bit. So that is the trickiest part of the operation. You need to make sure that you align the pieces very nicely together and we have a nice glue bead that tells us that we have a, a very good connection. Mm -hmm. Okay? Good.
So we are going to use nails, decorative nails, to hold the pieces together. So we are checking here the size of our uh, pilot hole to make sure that we can... Uh, do you want that or you want... No. Okay. I like the small one. To make sure that we are going to have an easy time putting the nails in without much difficulty and without splitting the wood, more importantly, right? Mm-hmm. So this is our next step. Now we're going to, to drill some holes. No? Yes. We're gonna wait till it's dry? No. Okay. Why would we wait until it's dry? I don't know, why would we? So it's more stable? I don't know. You said the glue is strong and it's gonna hold it and it's gonna be all we need is the glue. Drill. You need to put them all together. Yeah, bring me the nails. Let's put the two nails in so it doesn't move. Hold on. Let's put the two nails in and then you do the rest. Just, we have to make sure that it's very straight. Okay? It cannot go in a different direction than what we drill. This will follow the, the drill part. Okay. Here we go, old school. What is that again? Keep this, and we can put how many nails total we're going to put. Miss Wizard, water here. You know, some people like to water, mm -hmm. and what that does is actually makes the the pores of the wood open and put more glue in the pores, which makes it even harder to actually do anything with it. Okay, you want to? How many we're putting? Nails? I was gonna put three. Only three. So. Okay. Three on each side. Yeah, because okay. well, I mean, we have how many are in each one? Four pieces. Four. We mm -hmm. could do four, and then we wouldn't have a nail right above. Right above the. Mm -hmm. Okay, go for it. I have it. But I also need to balance myself with this. I think the nail is coming a little off. So, so we're going to do the same thing on the back side. This is the front. Mm -hmm. And of course, now it's upside down, right? Right. And again, these were really intended to be more decorative features, but they do help reinforce the joint a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, they enforce it a lot because I thought we were going to be just decorating, but we 
they are tight enough that they actually hold the piece. Okay. So because of, you know, the very advanced equipment we have in our shop, we devised this uh, brilliant jig to help us with the alignment of this piece, because this is, I think, the trickiest part, wouldn't you say? It is. Making sure all your pieces are aligned correctly so that the seams match up is always the trickiest part. Because we don't want this looking rusty, we want it to look like a f as finished as possible, so we want... Mm -hmm. With very clean lines. Right. So that, that, you need to pay some attention. And while we love these clamps, they also generate a problem that they are somewhat awkward to work with. Now we're going to glue. I think it was better so you will not scrape all the glue off. But I want to scrape it that way and not this way because this is the top of the piece, right? If I'm going to scrape any glue. What if I don't scrape any and I just lift it up? This is fast drying glue. Yeah. This is one of the smallest projects we've built in a while, but we're using virtually everything we have in our arsenal. We're using clamps, we're using uh, big clamps, little clamps, green clamps, we use the, green eggs the planer, we use the edger, mm -hmm. we use our power sander. Mm -hmm. What the have edger? we not used? The I joiner. thought that was the for joiner. the lawn. No. <laughs> well, the edger would be for the lawn. So the reason why these extra clamps, these big orange ones on, is just to pull these seams tighter. And as you can see, some more glue has squeezed out, but that is, we want to make it as tight and close as possible. to do it in this orientation. I think it's hard. Okay. We've got the first two uh, nails in place on this side and now drilling the pilot holes for the next two. And again drilling pilot holes just to ensure that this wood does not split. And now we, we bought somewhat expensive wood, not the most expensive wood, but because this is a, uh, a small project, you can afford this, a bigger, a better quality wood. Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to do it with um, pine, you can, I mean, dimensional number. Absolutely. I mean, look at these joints though. Mm -hmm. So we're overall very pleased with the, the progress so far. As you can see, all our joints are very nice. We might just do a little bit of sanding here to get rid of the little bit of glue, but overall we're very happy. This is, I don't think we could have gone any tighter. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think we can improve on that. And this is very nice. And mm -hmm. if our wood matched a little better, it would be totally invisible. Like this, if, if it was not of the colored variants, you would not know it right. were two pieces of wood, right. you know? Now you did use this plastic scraper to kind of get some of the glue off, which right. worked really, really well, but then you'll just take some fine sandpaper and... Yeah, it is actually it better to wait about 10 minutes and then use a scraper to clean the glue and then do a little bit of sanding versus wetting it. Uh, especially if you're going to stain, do not wet it. 
it's going to really damage the surface. It's going to make the stain lighter in that area. Mm -hmm. okay. So it is better to scrape it than anything else. So I think um, our next step is to actually poly it, right? Yep. What I'm gonna do though is before we do that, I'm gonna give it a very, very light sand with a very fine sandpaper just to make sure that every uh, you know, seam that we have kind of disappears. Okay. okay. This is polycrylic. Polycrylic. By okay. Minwax, which we're not sponsored by. But, if Minwax, but we like it. Yeah. But if Minwax wants to sponsor us, we'll we, take it. we're going to be open to that. Yeah. And it is also a low... Um, VOC? Yeah. Crystal clear top coat, durable, fast drying protection. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's low VOC because I always smell the stuff. Well, yeah, you smell everything. I do. Low VOC doesn't mean no VOC. I know, but there's usually much less odor. And for somebody who smells everything. Now, there are no VOC products. I know. a creative stirring implement it works and I don't care if it gets ruined right so moral of the story don't throw away your fast food utensils <laughs> take them to the shop because you can use them yeah. right okay so here we go Oops, sorry bud well this is not as good as the stain though no, because but you, you will see it when it is dried that it will make the difference. Mm -hmm. It's not an immediate. But with the light, you can see it has changed it a little bit. Yeah, it has. Well, it's just going to give it that clear skin. And maybe no, no just good, do your normal yeah, thing and let's go. go and see. So here's the moment of truth over the. Looks pretty freaking good to me. Again, it's just poly. There is no. Mm -hmm. And again, this wood was chosen because it has that purplish color to it in these certain areas. So it's just. It doesn't look very purple right no. now. But, yeah. Well, it does on camera, but it was also because it was in shadow. So. But there, as you, as it was tilted up, you can see. It's really, really beautiful. Overall, I think this is, this came out very, very good, you know. Mm -hmm. And you can see the top, it's already starting to dry a little bit. I think you're losing really the three-dimensionality of the engraving, though, because there's poly in the grooves. So you might want to use maybe a, a something to, to clear the groove. How can I do that? I don't know. So here is our laser engraving, and we were very impressed with the quality, right? Yes. It came out very, very nice, and Mrs. Wizard did an awesome job centering the piece. Again, for our purposes, this is great. If you're just laser engraving, you don't want the wood with different colors because you can see it kind of interferes with the, the emblem, right? But it's still, I think, very, very nice. It's beautiful, and it has so much character. Yep. Definitely what we wanted the laser for. This, this is the kind of projects we wanted to build. And this is our finished product. This is exactly what we're thinking. This is a, a under $20 product that you could not buy for the, the amount of money we spent. Of course, our time worth money too, but DIYing is exactly that, right? You exchange your time for better quality, more customized result. Projects, gifts, whatever you're doing, right? Right. So uh, this was the first project, as we said, that we use our laser and we got really happy. We we're really happy with the result. I mean, if every time something we want to do is as good, the laser really is doing its job. Very, very pleased with it. Overall, what was it, $17 cost, cost for this? With very little waste. I mean, we probably have maybe 30% of our material uh, that we didn't use, but I'm sure we'll find some use for it we'll do something with it so not a bad project we could have spent more money we could have spent less money right so this will be probably a five six dollar project if we use dimensional lumber or pieces of lumber that we have around we have plenty of material right we have plenty of material 
but that is, uh, that is a fact. <laughs> but we wanted something that was a little better. Again, we're very happy with our uh, joinery. And this is poplar. This okay. is poplar, yes. Okay. And as we said in the introduction, you don't have to have all the tools that we use today to do this project. A, a miter box and a saw is all that you really need. Mm -hmm. But if you have the tools, why not use them? Right. right? Right. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We, we did enjoy it. It was a non-stress episode. The build was very straightforward. The trickiest part was the connection between the verticals and the horizontals, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, I would say even a beginner woodworker can tackle something like this. And it makes a nice gift. I mean, this can be easily be modified to be a, a monitor stand with some space underneath, right? Mm -hmm. And you can change the design. Instead of having back and forth, you can put uh, side supports mm -hmm. and, and put a monitor on top. So there are many different ways you can do that. Very versatile. And I think anyone will enjoy a gift like that that you might, might give them a gift, right? Mm -hmm. Again, if you enjoyed this episode, we'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know what else you might want to see in future episodes. From Dr. Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, Elpida, and the Urban Homesteading Channel, stay safe, wash your hands, put your masks on, stay six feet, feet apart, and we're going to see you again Where, next week. Where's the little card that needs to be up here? There is Make no it. card. Make we do it. it every day. Make it. Right up here. And uh, so we can see you again in our next episode. Stay safe, friends.